All right, guys, this is David Fine. Watch your lip. Fast fish, beach fishing series. I'm going to try and make this video as fast as I can, but it's exciting, so it might be a little longer. How do you fish this fall mullet run? It's literally the time of year that all beach fishermen wait for all year long. Guys, it's the most exciting time of the year to be a beach fisherman. So guys, uh, get ready for this video. I'm gonna give you just a few pointers on how to fish the fall mullet run. Uh, guys, let's get to it. Every autumn, September, October on the Eastern seaboard, massive schools of Mujil Kumara, that's the silver mullet, mi migrate down uh, from the north to the south and just inundate our intracoastal waterways and our beaches with massive schools of mullet. And guys, it is the most exciting time of the year to fish because it just drives large predatory fish crazy. So if there was ever a time where you're going to get a 100-pound tarpon from the beach, this is the time to do it because you go get a mullet that big, a 10, 12-inch mullet, and you put it out there when that thing's hitting. And guys, the, the tarpon go crazy. Snook. Guys, you can catch snook, tarpon, jacks, sharks, barracuda, uh, cobia, mackerel, kingfish, uh, bluefish. Um, I know I'm missing species, guys, because like everything eats mullet. I mean, like it's, it's the Snickers bar of the ocean, really. And so these big schools come down and, uh, you know, now you're on the beach. It's September, October. And how do you find them? Well, it's not going to be very hard to find. If the mullet are on the beach, they're going to be crashing. They're going to be flying out of the water. There's going to be motion on the top. You're going to see them on the top of the water. What do you do? Uh, how do you fish these things? How do you catch a mullet? Well, a cast net, a very small cast net will do just fine because when the mullet are on the beaches, you, you can just have a very mediocre cast with a small net and you'll probably get more mullet than you need. Have a live well system there ready with a battery that you can help aerate your water. Mullet are very hardy baits. They stay alive very easily, but don't overcrowd your bucket. So that's one of the things that you gotta focus on. Don't overcrowd your bucket. Don't get greedy and try to keep 200 mullet in one little five gallon bucket. Uh, they're, they're all gonna die, all right? So take, keep what you need. It helps also to have a lid on your bucket because mullet jump and they're gonna jump out of the bucket and you're gonna go fish and come back to go get another bait and your mullet are all gonna be sitting there flopping around the sand. That's not a good thing. So have a lid on your bucket, have a good aerator. Don't overcrowd your bucket. Only keep what you're gonna use and, um, and release the rest and make sure that we are uh, respecting uh, those baits that we're not using. So uh, guys, cast net works great, mullet, while they're in the mullet run, they don't eat anything on rod and reel, so you're not going to catch them using a hook and line. You have to use a cast net to catch them. And uh, now, what do we use for gear? There's two strategies. Uh, some guys like to go real light. They'll just bring one rod and a, a small thing of tackle and a bucket and a cast net, and that's it. And the reason why they do that is because mullet schools move very quickly down the beach. So you might want to, you could, strategy number one, you could follow the school down the beach and literally just keep casting at the same school as it's being eaten. Uh, now that's great. That's a great strategy to stay in the action, uh, but that also takes you very far from your parking spot. Uh, or if you're with a large group of people, you can get separated from your group. Uh, but if you're by yourself, uh, that's a great way to go and fish the fall mullet run. One rod, small tackle box, a cast net, a bucket with a, lot, with a little aerator, and you can just follow school. Another strategy is you can bring multiple rods and you can set up camp kind of like we do uh, with during the summer in the pilchard schools and set out se several lines. And that's one strategy, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna wind up waiting in between the school pods. So the pods are gonna move uh, down the coast and they'll move past you. And then you just gotta get ready and you'll start hitting them when they come and then they'll pass you and then action will slow down a little bit. Uh, when the schools are really, really thick, it, it can, literally can be like the entire ocean is full of bait fish. I mean, there's millions, literally millions of mullet. So now the question is, how, do, how does your bait that's on your hook 
stand out from all of those millions of bait fish? And that's a question that if you find a great answer to, let me know, comment down below. But there's a few ways that you can do it. One of the ways is if the school is jammed up on the beach, cast out past the, the school on the outer edge of the school because a lot of times the bigger fish will be on the outside and corralling them in against the shoreline. If you, if you put one out there, it's gonna isolate it and separate it out and it'll actually, um, the bigger fish will see it more easily versus it being in the middle of the big school with all of its millions of friends, it might get lost in the crowd. Another way is to put a little pinch weight right by the hook and weight, weigh the, your bait down so it's down by the bottom and a lot of the schools are swimming up on top and there's your, your bait kind of twitching down by the bottom. Uh, that's another way to do it. Uh, some guys actually just cut the mullet in half and throw out, throw out a dead, dead bait. Here's why. A lot of toothy fish like mackerel, bluefish, barracuda, sharks, they'll come in, they'll grab a mullet, bite it in half, and the other half just sits there floating around, flopping around, and other predatory fish they make a living on just picking up the pieces that the toothy fish leave behind. So that's actually a very good strategy. Some of the largest tarpon I've ever hooked have been on a mullet head. So you can just cut a mullet in half, throw out the head, you know, and that, that works well a lot of times. Now, a lot of times there's different size mullet. A lot of times you have something called a finger mullet, which is about four, four inches long. And then you can have them all the way up to, you know, 16 inches long. And uh, depending on what you're fishing for is going to determine what size bait you're going to use. A lot of guys, a snooker tarpon will eat, you know, any mullet is good for a snooker tarpon. But a lot of times they get focused on a certain size bait. So if you're fishing for bluefish or fishing for the mackerel or the smaller fish, a finger mullet might be really good. Use a smaller hook. Use it like a 2-0 uh, circle hook or J hook, either one. Uh, I use about a 60 pound fluorocarbon leader, um, probably four foot of uh, fluorocarbon leader, and I splice it right onto my main line and just flat line it. Or if you want to do a slider rig, you can do that as well. You have your mono leader, probably four feet long, three or four feet long, to a swivel. And then on the other side of your swivel, you have your weight uh, sliding up and down uh, with a bead in between your weight and your swivel. That's a great rig to fish. Uh, the mullet with. So where do I hook my mullet? And that's a great question that every bait is a little different. You got to know the anatomy of your fish. Mullet are very simple. You can hook them down by the anal fin and that's one strategy. And in fact, if you're, if you're free lining a mullet and you're just letting the mullet swim, that's a great place. You hook it, you put the hook underneath by the anal fin and you keep a little tension on your reel and it's gonna fight, the fish is gonna fight against that tension and it's gonna swim away from you and it's a very hardy bait, they can live a long time. I prefer to hook mine in the nose and here's what I say, here's what I mean by that. It seems like God designed these things very specifically for fishermen because if you go put the point of the hook inside of the mouth, right in the middle on the upper part portion of the mouth of the mullet, there's a little groove where the cartilage kind of indents. You put your point of your hook in the mouth, out through that little, that little groove, and then up through the top of the cartilage of the head, uh, right, right in front, not in the brain. You, got, you, know, you don't want to go too deep. It's sturdy. You can cast it, um, and the mullet lives very, very well. It's not hitting any vital organs. It's a great place to hook your bait. A lot of guys use artificial uh, lures in the mullet run, and that's a great strategy. Man, when the, when the feeding frenzy is on, a crocodile spoon works wonders because you can cast them very far. Uh, they're very durable. They're not, you know, the toothy fish aren't going to bite them up like they would a soft plastic bait. Uh, a crocodile spoon is a nice hard uh, thing. It's got a big treble hook on the back, so you got to be careful with that. Uh, but you can throw that crocodile spoon. Maybe tip it with a little bit of wire so that the bluefish and mackerel don't chew them up. But uh, it's a great bait. You can catch a lot of fish. You can catch one after another when the feeding frenzy is happening. Uh, other guys use spool techs, which is a great and more, more of an expensive lure. Live targets work well. There's a number of lures, bomber lures, usuries. They all have mullet mimics. So you can go down to your local tackle shop and ask them for a mullet lure and you can find the finger mullet size 
or you can find the big ones. And depending on what you're fishing for, you know, you're going to have a different size uh, bait. But if you're fishing for those big tarpon, you got to make sure you have a lot of line. I would fish minimum 20 pound test. I would fish maybe up to 40 pound test braid and, you know, a nice big long uh, fluorocarbon leader. You got to make sure you have enough line on your reel, at least two, 300 yards of line. Because if you hook a hundred pound tarpon from the beach, you're in for a war, an all out war. It's a phenomenal fight. Uh, guys, or even a big Jack Cravel. You hook into a 30 pound Jack, you better hold on because that thing is going to fight you hard. You got to make sure you're prepared for those big fish that will eat the mullet during the fall mullet run. So guys, I hope you learned something. Uh, the fall mullet run, it's kind of like, if you can't catch fish during the fall mullet run, then it's, it's pretty much foolproof. So you got to get out there, September, October, great time of year to be out in the beaches of South Florida. Uh, guys, hope you liked the video and learned something. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Share us with all your friends and let us know. Uh, obviously, these videos are not comprehensive. There's always more information that could be shared. Let us know if you have an, a video idea that you'd like to know um, a, a particular angle, type of bait fish, type of tackle, and we'll do our best to get you uh, those videos. So, guys, God bless. Take care. Stay safe. Uh, let's get out there and rip some lips, shall we? Watch your lip.